It's always a pleasure to be joined by special teams coordinator, assistant head coach, Darren Simmons in the trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics. And he was outstanding as always. He's the guy. I mean, Darren Simmons is gonna be instrumental in the decision-making process of guys making the Cincinnati Bengals roster, the 53-man roster, due to special teams play. Special team snaps are going to be critically important. Who makes it? Does he keep an extra defensive back and one fewer wide receiver or the reverse of that? Do you keep an edge rusher as opposed to another linebacker? Do you wide receiver as opposed to a defensive player? I mean, you're not just trying to be the last guy at your position group. You're trying to, you're competing with the last guy at all these position groups. So it's like, it is, it is a very, very competitive environment. Nobody figures it out better than Darren Simmons. And the roster that he's got to work with is extraordinary. And of all the faith in the world, he's going to make all the right calls with everybody else involved in making those roster decisions from top to bottom in the organization. But it is, is very interesting. Special teams, those snaps are critical down the stretch of the preseason. Fur will fly with these young players trying to make this football team. And if they don't make this football team, they want good special team snaps for other teams in the National Football League. Because on the 29th of August, they have to cut 30 players, over 30 players from every football team. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be the wild, wild west out there. There's going to be a glut of players. And all these guys want to continue their career in the National Football League on a practice squad in the National Football League, that's a six-figure job. Or in another league, the XFL, the USFL, the whatever FL. <laughs> Everybody's looking to extend their professional football career. It's going to be interesting. It's always a pleasure to have this gentleman join us in the trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics, and as always, coming to you from our outstanding studios. And by this gentleman, I mean special teams coordinator, assistant head coach, Darren Simmons. 21 years of greatness with the Cincinnati Bengals. We're very fortunate to have a guy of this caliber with the organization for over two decades. Coach, appreciate you carving time for us, sir. Well, I appreciate it. It's always being on here. I always look forward to, to being on these things and talking with you. you. You have such great insight as to what really goes on behind the scenes, and and uh, you give our fans great insight. Appreciate that very much. I know it's uh, – here you are in the dog days of training camp. you got a couple of preseason games under your belt. Uh, have another preseason game coming up here shortly. It's going to be big for everybody that's trying to make the back end of the roster – and special teams play, uh, it, it's going to be something to watch against the, the Washington uh, Commanders. Um, so what do you think, Coach? I mean, is, will fur fly? Will special teams, will guys be flying around the football field? Yeah, I, I think it's a it's certainly a delicate balance that you try to uh, go through. When we're trying to decide the final couple roster spots, yet at the same time, um, everybody seems to protect their – front line players and which means then maybe the second team guys are now the starters on offense and defense. And those are normally my first year players. And um, we're trying to protect those guys also a bit because I, I need them really for the most important part for that is to have them ready for Cleveland. So the third game really becomes a, a, a very, very, you know, I lose more sleep over this game and, um, just about keeping guys healthy and, and getting through the game. Yet at the same time, those battles, that, as you talk about, that are still kind of up in the air, it's an opportunity for guys to get, uh, you know, the look and other opportunities, a chance for us to evaluate. Um, so it's a fine line that you walk as to how much you want to expose them to versus, uh, uh, you know, how much you're just trying to get through the game healthy and stay healthy. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll have to plan that out, you know, pretty tight here and, and uh, um you know, see if we can get some of those things resolved. So you have a, a battle going on at the at the punter position itself. Drew Chrisman um, has come back from the medical issue, and he's available for you. 
and, and Robbins has been punting all through training camp in the preseason games. Is that a hotly contested battle that's coming down to the, the final stretch here? Yeah, I, 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 I think uh, it has been. You know, the one thing that I can't control is how many times they punt in the game. Um, they punted three times last week, or we punted, I'm sorry, three times last week. Brad took the first one. Drew took the second one. Brad also took the, or I mean, Brad took the third one. Right. And so I, I wish we'd have more opportunities, really, to put to punt. Uh, I, I say that kind of tongue-in-cheek, but, you know, it's, right. it's historically you don't want to punt. But in the preseason game, I, I, I do want to because I, I want a chance to evaluate those guys. So some of it has to come from practice. Obviously, Drew didn't have the opportunity to play in the first preseason game. He still – wasn't quite uh, back to where we needed him to be to play in that game. So, again, this is going to be an important one for him, too. Um, you know, again, how much we punt, I have no idea. So I got to try to control the reps accordingly um, to get him the, the most looks. And, and Brad, quite frankly, the same thing, most looks we possibly can. So, yeah, it, it'll, it's going to continue to be a, a hotly contested deal. So it seems like with the Bengals and the opponents and almost on a league-wide basis, returners are taking everything back they possibly can. I mean, there's, uh, is, is that by design or are coaches saying, look, I want to see how the blocking patterns are going. I want to see guys get off blocks and, and cover kicks and all that. Or, or is it, is it something different going on there? No, I, I think in, you know, I, I hate, especially like in these first couple games, I hate touchbacks. Um, and the right. touchbacks prove nothing other than the fact you got a strong kicker who can hit the ball deep. Sure. You know, you know, we, I want to see guys line up and cover, and, and we do that, you know, primarily when, when the situation calls for it, which is, you know, certainly in the first half. I know we kicked it deep uh, late in the fourth quarter after we'd, you know, scored the touchdown, took the lead against Atlanta. We kicked deep uh, against Atlanta and hit the touchback. Otherwise, though, you know, all of our other kicks, we popped up, and, and we want, you know, have a, a chance to cover. Yep. Just like for the flip in the return game. You know, we returned a couple balls that were deeper in the end zone in the first preseason game. Because again, and I have no, we wouldn't do that. Some of those things in the regular season. Sure. Um, but you know, it's a chance for me to get to evaluate guys as blockers. How do we react? It, it, you know, it's a chance to get guys like Shedrick Jackson a, a kickoff return, something he's never done before. Um, so really, touchbacks don't prove a whole lot to me in the, in the preseason game. So we, we we try to bring as many of those balls as we can. Again, when it comes to this third preseason game, you kind of walk a fine line of not exposing guys to injury. Um, yet at the same time, still trying to evaluate. So it, it, it becomes a little more uh, of, of a touchy deal when we get to this third game. Though. Are there like some battles going on? People are, okay, well, the hunting battle is obvious, but other positions, uh, it's always like, okay, are we talking about a seventh receiver? Or are we talking about an 11th defensive back? Are we talking, you know, it's, it's like you're not necessarily just competing with the guys in your position group. Right. Make it back into the roster. You're competing with guys yeah. that who's going to give Darren Simmons the most special team snaps, basically, right? Yeah, I, I think that it, yeah, you're you're exactly right. It's not just you know you're not just competing. Orange is competing against oranges. It may be orange because competing against apples. It may be like yeah. you said in different position groups. Like what's better for a team, as, as you said, uh, is it the seventh receiver? Is it the eleventh defensive back? Is it the tenth defensive lineman? Um, you know, what fits our roster the best. I think you have to have the, we have to foreshadow a bit. Um, sometimes it, it, it comes up to things like specific age and position groups. We have older, some, an older player in a position group that, you know, we may think needs a rest or, or may potentially get injured, or is there an injury history to a certain position group, um, you know, historically or even specifically to one specific player? Um, is he more apt to get injured? Do we, do we need to keep an extra guy there to keep that covered up? Um, those are all things that we'll talk about and we've been talking about, but those are things that will really come up. We've got to make a call on those, you know, in, in the middle of or early part of next week. So, yes, you're exactly right. Those are exactly the conversations that we're having now is how, how do all those things fit together. It's interesting, too, to manage um, like a guy like Yossi Vosh, who's was targeted 10 times in the last game and he's, he's running a lot of routes. And, but he's playing special teams as well, and he's he's running down under under kicks, and that's a lot of running. And it's like, okay, well, oh man, is it fair to have the kid run a fifty yard pattern and then have to go down and cover a kick? You get almost like we should maybe take him out of this series if he's going to be, you know, covering kicks here. I, there's a lot of uh, a lot of thought that has to go into how and when you yeah. play these guys, isn't there? Well, that's exactly what happened specifically with, with uh, Andre um, the other night in the Atlanta game. He started the game. We played the first two series at receiver. I mean, we, we couldn't 
we couldn't foreshadow the fact that they're going to go on a 12 minute or 10 minute drive. Atlanta was, it took up right. most of the first quarter, but there was a specific drive that uh, for us, that they were going to take Andre out as a receiver with the hopes that if we can, if we were punting on that series, great, then we're going to get him a rep at Gunner. And that's exactly what happened. Um, our first punt of the game, we were, I was able to get him in at Gunner. So he got a good rep where he's fresh. Um, and not, you know, playing first down, second down, third down receiver, then have to go line up as a gunner where he's gassed. Um, he was out that series as, as a receiver with a specific plan that hopefully we could get him a rep as a gunner. And, that, and that's what happened. So we got a, a really good look at what he could do for us as a gunner relative to what could happen against Cleveland. Can he be one of those guys that, uh, you know, maybe potentially on, on in a real regular season game, be more of a backup player for us? Going to be fresher. Can he cover them as a gunner and do what we need him to do? So that's and that's exactly what happens. So it's good to see that. Good to see him cover in that fashion under that situation in our game against Atlanta. You you, you talk about um, the young receivers, the young defensive backs. I mean, the speed of these guys mm -hmm. is like it's 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 eye catching for sure. Yeah. Uh, and and is this potentially the fastest special teams group you may have as well? Well, one of, I think, you know, we, we've had some fast guys that can really run, you know, here in the past. Um, and it's, it's when you're talking about the 21st season, it, there's a lot of uh, thought that has to go into team speed. But yeah, sure. I, I do like a lot of where some, especially some of these young guys are and can run. DJ Turner can certainly run. We know that being the fastest guy at the combine. Andre is, I, I think the one thing that shocks people about Andre is how big he is yeah. and, and, and how fast he is. He's a, he's a big man that can that can really run. Um, and yeah, we have several other guys that can still run too. I mean, Tyson Anderson runs really well, um, you know, for his size. Uh, we, we, we do. The, the opportunity is here for us to increase our team speed. That's certainly that we're something we're always looking to improve on is team speed, uh, certainly over what we had last season. And, uh, you know, hopefully with the way this shakes out, it'll, it'll, it'll fit us favorably that way. Tyson Anderson had, had the real big game, two interceptions in a quarter. You know, it's oh, that's that's pretty that's pretty special. That doesn't happen at any level very sure. often. But the fact is, you know, all the other reps is he in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing? All the reps with you, especially teams, is the same thing. Is he in the right gap? Is he is he hitting the right lane? All all of those sorts of things. Um, it's 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 big for Tyson Anderson. These special teams reps are huge, aren't they? Yeah, and I, I think it's it's more about, uh, you know, what does the whole picture look like? What does the whole book look like and not one specific chapter? Yep. You know, and uh, I certainly agree that those those two splash plays that he made were big plays. You know, but those are plays that uh, we'd hope he would make. But, you know, what happens on the other 30 plays that he plays in that game? Are right. they good enough? Are they consistent enough? Um, you know, that we were able to depend on him, you know, on a Sunday, on a real Sunday. Um, when the real bullets are flying, and uh, so that, all, all that all that figures into it for sure. You know, it's it's interesting. Um, there's the the base defense for Lou Anarumo is is a nickel basically. It's a four mm -hmm. four two five defensive look, and that minimizes the number of linebackers on the roster. Is that is that an impact on special yeah. teams? It's, or, a or, or, it's a major you know. impact. For, it's a major yeah. impact. You know, when, when Coach Lewis was here, we were a four three team. Yep. Um, you know, again, this is dating us back a little bit. We always kept six linebackers. Sometimes we kept seven. We, we, they may have not all been active on Sunday, but we always kept six at a minimum. So I had at least three backups. And that uh, that fourth linebacker, um, who was our Sam, would come out of the game in nickel situation. So a lot of times I really I was playing four linebackers. Um, now we don't even have that that fourth linebacker. Now that fourth linebacker is the nickel. And um, so he is really that that uh, if you want to call it six linebacker, um, but it, it does certainly affect what we do um, or what I do. I, I feel like we've we've lost one of the main contributors that we have. Now we're kind of playing with three linebackers, um, you know, to some degree. And we're kind of missing that fourth guy, that extra guy where we used to steal some reps from, you know, whether it was the Rashad Gentis for those who can remember guys like him um, of the world. Um, I think we tried to make uh, Michael Johnson that guy for a time. It was going to be Dave Pollock for for. Uh, right. Again, I'm, I'm dating myself here by going way back. We've had a variety of those guys. Manny Lawson was another one we used to. I used to use quite a bit that made an impact for me. So I've kind of lost that guy. Now, where do you get that guy from? Well, is it the extra DB? If it's the extra DB, then all of a sudden we just become smaller. 
maybe, maybe faster, but we've come, become smaller. Or is it a defensive lineman, one of those hybrid type tweener defensive line types? Um, you know, is it a Miles Murphy? What, what, what can he do? Um, uh, or or it's, is it the Jeff Gunters or is it uh, the Joseph Osai's? Uh, so now you become bigger and, and, and uh, uh, you lose some of the, the maybe the quickness and the movement in space. So, it, it, again, it's it's a it's a balancing act of trying to figure out um, where what can those guys do best relative to what we're going to do or what we're going to be up against and, and trying to get the matchups in our favor. Over the years, you've had uh, Pro Bowl players. I mean, you have punter Kevin Huber, uh, long distinguished career Pro Bowler, uh, Cedric Pureman as a returner and a covered kick coverage guy uh, was a pro bowl for you. Clark Harris, 1880 snaps. He never had an unplayable snap and Cal, what did Cal have over 160? I think it was this past season. Um, you know, all of them playable that it, it's been, it's been a, a, pr- a pretty good run for it. And you've had, you've had special specialists at every, uh, every key area make the pro bowl. It's been an outstanding, uh, Special teams run for special teams coordinator Darren Simmons. Well, good players, you know, good players make good coaches, <laughs> and uh, there are uh, a, a, lot, a lot of things with some of those guys that you've talked about that I that I can't coach. Whether it's Cedric Pierman's speed or his desire or his want to to be a, a great player, you know, there's things with with Kevin. Um, there are things with uh, certainly Clark. Uh, you know, I, I can't teach Adam Jones his quickness and change of direction or his fearlessness. That's something I can't coach. I can, I can help some of the things. I can help point him in the right direction. But in the end, it, it's his instincts that have to take over and, and make the plays that he made, you know, over time. Or the same thing even with said Pierman. You know, um, I can help develop them, but, but the natural gifts that they have, I got no control over. So, um, you know, I, I've been fortunate to be around, you know, good players, Um you know, and hopefully we can just get them steered in the right direction. And, and hopefully we have some of those guys on our roster now. You know, it, it'll be up to them to whether they can develop um, into being good players and great players. I, I, I think the, the players have certainly changed, uh, you know, the, the, over time. Yeah, I think the college, I think it's a result of what the college football landscape is. It's, it's just different now than what it used to be in college. And with the advent of the, you know, the portal that they have, they can transfer and go from school to school. Now some of these guys can get this NIL money. Um, so th- there, there's a different expectation, I think, that with some of these young guys um, compared to what it used to be. Yeah, I mean, all, all great points. So uh, you've, you've always got your core players, and you do a great job of identifying, you know, who could fit that bill as a core player and, and really work with them in that, in that regard. Name, and I guess if I ask you to start naming guys, uh, you know, somebody will be left out that you don't want to leave yeah. out. But, but if, if you had to pick – a handful of guys over the years that have been core players that really jump out at you or come to mind. What type of guys are you looking for to be Darren Simmons core players on Cincinnati Bengals special teams? Well, first of all, I, I, I think the most important prerequisite that you have to have is you have to understand what your role is on the team and you have to be fine with that. You know, I, I think everybody uh, always wants to be a starting offensive or defensive player you know, I think every running back that comes in here wants to be Corey Dillon or, or wants to be a starter like what Joe Mixon was. And, and the reality is a lot of them aren't or, or even a Rudy Johnson. Right. And I think the, the fact is a lot of them aren't going to be that. You know, and I think that, that Cedric Pierman recognized that right away that I'm not going to be a starting. Uh, I'm not going to be an every down running back. So how can I you know, positively affect the team and really at the same time, give me the longest career I possibly can in this league. That's yeah. what they're all looking for, looking for longevity, sure. looking looking to carve out a niche and find a role and stay in that role for as long as they can. And so, you know, I, I think the, the the number one prerequisite, they have to have the understanding of what their role is and where they fit on a 53-man roster. And the quicker that they can – I think that's part of my job is helping some of these guys understand that. You know, some of these young guys that come in now, they, they, they all think they're going to be starting players in their first year, and it's just – you know, it's real easy for me to say, okay, you want to, you want to go ahead and we want to take Logan Wilson out of the game. You want to take Jermaine Pratt. You're going to beat those two guys out. I'm like, guys, that ain't happening. Right. And so you better understand the, the way that you're going to affect the game is by being a dominant player or being a good player, not being a dominant, but just being a good player for me. And so I, I think they have to, they have to come to that realization that, uh, um, 
what, what, how are they going to affect the game? Because it's, it's probably been different from what they've been in college. They've been the frontline players in college, and, and now they're, they've got to become frontline players from in the kicking game. And, and so understanding your role is one. I, I think number two is um, your attitude. Um, they, they have to be tough, tough, tough individuals to do what we do here. You know, it's, it, uh, you know, I, I think one comparison that somebody used one time, it's an, an ad, very, very accurate one. I think for a special teams player, you're a bit like a sniper, right? In the, in the army or, uh, in the armed forces, you're like a sniper. You've got one shot to shoot. We got fourth down. That's it. We don't have first down, second down, and third down. And, and just like a sniper, he's got one bullet to make it count. Yep. And if he misses, if he misses with that one shot, then, then his, his location's compromised and, and now he, he becomes a target. So right. I, I feel like we're kind of in the same boat for, again, for purposes of, of comparison. Um, you know, we've got one down and we got fourth down to make it right. So they have to be accountable um, too. Uh, that's another big one that they have to do is they have to understand, you know, what their responsibility is on that play and then how do I effectively execute it based on what the opponent's doing. So that's just a couple of factors I think that, that can come into play for what types of guys we're looking for. Um, you know, and some of that comes through experience and some of it, uh, um, you know, happens just naturally. Some, some guys can walk in here because of their experience they've had in, in the kicking game, maybe in college that they come in here kind of, you know, not ready made, but they, they come in here on a higher level. In a guy that, you know, came jumping to mind that understood his role and has understood it for, for many, many years. That's a great role model for you on the team is Michael Thomas. I mean, Michael is a guy mm -hmm. that he knows exactly you know, what, what his role is. He does it exceptionally well. And you talk about attitude coach, you know, you gotta have the right, this guy's attitude is like extraordinary. It's, it's like, yeah. it's an example that everybody should, should abide by. Uh, he's a, he's a special guy, isn't he? No, oh, yeah. He, he's been fantastic. He's a good leader. Um, you know, he, he's got the big picture in mind too. Um, he's been on a couple different teams um, yep. and he see, he sees the way things have been run other places compared to what they are here. And, and he's someone that I have a great deal of respect for, for what he's done. You know, if I were to name some guy, Mike Thomas would be one. Cedric Pierman would certainly be, you know, another very big one. Vinny Ray would be one. Sure. Uh, that comes to my Dan Scuda was another guy dating back. That was a really, really good player for us. Um, uh, Dan you know, Scuda, I love it. Yeah. Tab Perry was one way back who got his career kind of cut short because of injury, but he was a, he was yep. not only a good cover player, he was also a good returner. Yeah. Um, you know, Jeremy Miles was a, was a good cover player for us who, you know, knew what his role was as a backup safety um, and did it effectively um, and at a high level for us for, for some time. And and we've, we've got a couple now that have, are playing. I mean, Akeem Davis Gaither, you know, that's kind of the reason we took him. And uh, I'm telling you, the, the last half of last season, I mean, he, he played as well as anybody in the NFL. I mean, huh. He played at a high, high, high level at the end of last year, and he's picked up right where he left off. I mean, he, he's his play has been limited for me uh, thus far in, in games, but it shows up in practice. I think it shows up at what he does on defense uh, too in the game. But but he he's also a, a guy who understands, who who knows a, a, he has a specific role, and he wants to graduate. You know, he wants to move up and become a starting player. I get that, um, but he's also he also knows how he's going to positively affect the game or most directly affect the game right now is in the kicking game. And, and he's doing a fantastic job of that. Yeah. I mean, it, his, his case is, is a great example. Akeem Davis gather. Um, he's a great, great player. I mean, he, he could be a three down back in, yeah. in the national football league and, and, but he's battling two others that just signed, resigned mm -hmm. uh, long-term contracts uh, that, that are pretty damn good. I mean, you yeah. have, you have Wilson, you have Pratt and, and, what, how many teams in the NFL, if you have one three-down linebacker, you're fortunate. If you have two, that's that's crazy. The Bengals are looking, pretend, you know, with, with Akeem Davis Gaither coming on like he is, three three-down linebackers, that's that's an unbelievable luxury, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's a it's a really good luxury. And it's you know, it's the, the positive part is is I, I, I get to have one of those guys full time. And, yeah. uh, and, and that's a huge deal for me. And, you know, and you could even add Marcus Bailey to that a little bit. I think yep. every time he's yep. had an opportunity to play, he, he's done pretty well, too. So, um, you know, again, hopefully we can keep everybody healthy. And and and, uh, and that's always a success to any season or any team is keeping guys healthy and, and having them accessible. Um, and you're able to use them on a week-to-week -week basis. And, and if we can do that, we'll have a chance. 
Well, it's going to be interesting. Uh, it, Coach, the, the, uh, the flood of players this year on the 29th of August, everybody mm-hmm. goes from 90 to, I don't know, maybe a, a team is down to 89 or 88 because of injury reserve or whatever the case may be. But there's going to be uh, just a flurry yeah. of activity in that one day. What's that, what's that day going to be like for you yeah. as you're trying to go through and evaluate? You guys obviously already are like, okay, well, this guy might be – let go by this team that this guy might be let go but i mean the numbers are staggering yeah well they, they it's a double-edged sword a bit you know there used to be a couple cut down days you know there used right. to be one before the third preseason game then i think the league finally in, in smart fashion finally realized that most teams don't play a lot of their frontline players in the third preseason game to protect them so they've kept the rosters bubbled up a little bit to have you know more players available for that game and so they've done that smart and, but yet at the same time, it puts instead of being to stagger those cuts a bit so we can stagger our you know, your evaluation of players on other teams to see if they're, you know, they improve the level on your own team. Now all that's dumped into one day. So there's going to be quite a, as you said, there's going to be quite a flurry of, of movement. And, and uh, they'll, they'll, these, uh, uh, the video will be running a lot over the course of those couple of days just looking at other players. But, you know. Frankly, with the way in the olden days, you know, when, when everything used to be on tape, that I mean, that was an exhausting process because you, you know, uh, you had to find the right tape, find the right game. Now we have everything, you know, all, all this data of playtime. Um, so it's really, really, really streamlined that process for us that to uh, from the data that we have now from a couple different programs and, and the way that uh, this digital video stuff works, man, it's everything is right here in our hands. It's just a matter of you know, we still got to take the time and we have to physically put our eyes on the video and watch it to see if this guy does improve us or not. It's going to be uh, incredible. And, you know, I look at the Bengals roster and done such a good job in accumulating players that can, can be a factor. A lot yeah. of players are fighting for a, a legitimate role. And it's like, man, there's going to be players that don't make this roster that are going to go elsewhere and have NFL careers extended and maybe even get starting jobs elsewhere. I mean, I think that's how, how good this roster is. So, boy, it ain't going to be easy, coaches. It never is. But, boy, that making these roster decisions can uh, can be a challenge for sure. Well, it is, and I think that's kind of what separates them. Are we keeping the right guys? Are we not keeping the right guys? How does it all fit? Yeah. I mean, not only do you have to have the first game in mind, you have to have, you have, to have a little foresight to look down the road at, is this guy going to be available or accessible to us in you know November and December when it really counts? Um, you know they all count, but you know it, it, when it gets to the critical parts later in the season, yep. you know, and you got to balance you know what guys we potentially have on PUP right now and how that works, and guys who are injured, do we put them on IR, do we keep them, do we carry them? I mean, how, how all that works, it's 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 quite a task, but we'll get it figured out. Always do, always do, oh. and you're a, a big. Uh... Big reason, uh, reason why they had the success they've had from a top to bottom roster standpoint. Coach, can't thank you enough. I know uh, it's a busy time. Thanks for carving time for us as always, and uh, go get them, sir. Put together the best roster you've ever uh, ever put together. Well, we'll need to. Got to get back. Got to get back up to the top again. You can't stay the same. We got to keep on improving. Yeah, but, there's no mistake nice having me on. There's no, no, no. My pleasure. There's no seat at that top of the ladder success right so everybody always trying to knock you off that bad boy absolutely that, that's a that's a good problem to have no question thanks you, Appreciate you, sir yeah you got it take care dave lapham here and every day i am grateful for my experience to have played professional football as a player i realize self-motivation leadership and appreciating your teammates are key at first star logistics you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team.